Hey gang, we're going to try something different here. Um, obviously this is the Tamiya Folkwolf FW190F8. And uh, this is just about five hours of build video that uh, we're going to cut down here into about 12 or 13 minutes. Um, so I'll just pipe up once in a while and uh, make some comments. Um, but for the most part, there's just going to be some background music and, and we'll kind of go from there. Um, here we're just doing basic assembly, uh, cleaning up parts. My glue of choice, um, is the, uh, MEK there in the old Tamiya extra thin bottle. Um. And here, obviously, we're clamping the wing together. This is a great kit. I didn't, uh, there's no filler on this at all. Um, I think it's a mid-90s vintage Tamiya kit. Um, decals, you know, typical, not great. Um, but they weren't bad. And, uh, but no, it had really great, uh, really great fit. And came out wonderful. And here I'm just painting some cockpit details. Uh, painting the seat cushion there. So I just did my standard thing here. I, I uh, just dry brushed it. So I painted it uh, RLM 66, Model Master Enamel RLM 66. And then I went in with some, I don't know, light gray or neutral gray or medium gray or something and dry brushed it. And I don't, uh, I don't remember what I did with the instrument dials. Um, well, here, it's sitting right here. Let me look. Uh, yeah, you can't hardly see them. I don't know whether I painted them black or not. I don't remember. Anyway. So here I'm making some seat belts. And this is a pretty good, this works well. Uh, the only thing where I screwed up on this one is I made them too wide. And that's really easy to do. At least it is for me. Because when you get them down to where they're actually like scale width, they look too small. At least to my eye. Um, so, you know, it's just Tamiya tape. That's all it is. Tamiya tape cut into strips. I put some chrome silver on the ends of, on one end of the piece of tape. Um, and, uh, well, I paint them their overall color first and then and I do it lightly so it's more like kind of a, a wash than a a full opaque paint coat and then I just put a blob of silver on the end to represent some kind of buckle and I stick them down to the seat and, and that's it. I, I don't get fancy with them um, at all. So what I'm doing here is is fixturing this thing up to keep the horizontal stabilizers lined up. And um, so this aircraft sits pretty good on its belly. So I didn't really have to get all crazy with trying to keep it level. I just put those, uh, those are two big magnets is what those are. So I put those magnets there stick the horizontal stabilizers in and then I use a couple of triangular makeup sponges. I tried the magnets but they were too tall. Um, so I use these triangular makeup sponges to get the, um, the height correct and get them level. And then I'll just hit the, the seam with um, the mating surface with the MEK. So you hit it with the MEK, you let it sit for a little bit, and then you kind of pick it up and just kind of push them in, make sure they're seated well. But I give it a, I give it a little while to kind of set set the angle, and um, I'm just checking it there with a the ruler. You know, this see this may seem over the top to some people, but. When you're looking at a model from head on, at least for me, the first thing I notice 
is that the horizontal stabilizers are crooked. That's the first thing I see. Um, so I tend to, I try to be really careful with those myself. And I'm just checking the alignment by eye. And sometimes you'll have it exactly right and you look at it by eye and it doesn't look right. So I'm not beyond tweaking it a little bit so that it looks okay. So here we've got Stino Res Primer on and I'm just, uh, the canopy was on it when I primed it, or no it wasn't. The sliding portion wasn't. So I'm putting that on now. Um, now that I got the, the turtle deck painted and whatnot to protect the turtle deck. Um, I'm not going to show any painting in this video because my airbrush setup's in, in the old workshop and, and you've all seen people paint with airbrush on YouTube. There's no point going into that. Um, here's our final paint job. I am just rubbing this out with a makeup sponge so that the decals will go down better. Um, Model Master enamels. Um, I used, I had the uh, RLM color for the bottom. Um, I used some modern Air Force grays for the top. You know, these a lot of these grays and stuff that the modern militaries use were all all came out of German World War II research. So they're they're all quite similar. So you don't have to get really crazy about it. But um, and then here's the decal. So you know, I just cut. I go, I take the sheet and I cut off everything that I need. And things like national insignia or whatever, I will leave in pairs. Now I screwed up here. I didn't. I should have left the um, the rocket launchers off until I got the decal on, or I should have trimmed the decal before I put it in the water. But I didn't think about the fact that part of the international or the national insignia was under the rocket launcher pad. So what I had to do is just go back in here with a scalpel and trim it. And, and that worked fine, but it, it wasn't ideal. Um, and I, you know, they call out black for that, um, for that rocket launcher set up there. But I, it didn't make any sense to me, so I did it the, the same, you know, the RLM 76, I believe it is, the undercolor. Or 75 or whichever one it is um, and this is the to me a mark fit strong I believe and again you know I, I've had it work I've had the market and the mark fit strong work on certain things but I'll tell you I constantly have to go back to my microsol and microset to my microset microsol so I went back to the microsol after all the Tamiya stuff to get this stuff to really lay down um, so what I did at this point, it's had the, the white, the whitewash put on it. Um, that was just to me XF2. I rubbed it off in some places with some isopropyl rub, rubbing alcohol. And now I am just, I'm doing exhaust stains and, and gun stains and rocket exhaust stains and blending the, uh, the whitewash, um, with grays and whites and blacks. So this is really the final stage here. Um, and once this is done, so my typical process, once I get this done, I'll flat coat it. In this case, I used a uh, XF-82. And then I will go back and paint the, um, the gun barrels, typically. Um, but yeah, there she is, she looks pretty good. The, yeah, so here I go with the, the metalizer gun metal. And yeah, you can't, you can't brush, you can't hand brush with, uh, with Tester's metalizer. Yeah, you can. You can. <laughs> Trust me, I've done it a lot. Um, so yeah, the pastel colors on this one were, were very limited because of the, of the winter camo. 
And, um, you know, painting details at the very end can be kind of intimidating for people. And I understand why, because you're at the end and you've got all this stuff done and you're ready to rock and roll and just call it done. But it's, it's not a big deal. It's really not. Um, if you're careful and you watch what you're doing, it's not a big deal. See, so here I'm grabbing these grays and these whites, and I'm just blending. Because you put that XF2 on there and then you rub some of it off in places. You know, I just use an earbud with rubbing alcohol and just kind of rub some of it off in places. And, and it wasn't a full coat. It was just kind of mismatched, you know, semi-opaque coat. Um, but yeah, so I'm coming back in here with the pastels to blend it all, to make it look right. <laughs> Whatever right is. Um, and here's the final product. Um, I'm really happy with this. I think it came out really good. The One of the main wheels is not straight. This, this, this kind of kinked FW190 landing gear is kind of hard to deal with for me and um, you'll notice there's no lower gear doors on the, there's no wheel covers on the on the gear doors that's because um, so this particular aircraft was based in Hungary in the winter 45 and the muds because the the fields got muddy they would take the lower gear doors off because the mud would get jammed in there and, and jam up the main wheels um, so that's why there's no lower main gear doors and there's not a lot of chipping you know I don't see a whole lot of evidence in photos of, of Luftwaffe aircraft even at the end of the war to, to support a whole lot of chipping it's just not there um, in my opinion I, I mean if, if you've seen something else that's fine but in case you're looking at it and going well there's no chipping that that's why that's it we're done have a great day